This is my second video for the week. So this is Vinyl Happy Hour, season four, episode 17. So if you're already watching this, you can go back afterwards and check out episode 16, where I also talked a little bit about the 50th anniversary of Rams. I was drinking some rum, so some Ram rum. Uh, me and Lauren finished this bottle off, although there wasn't much in it to begin. It's a very beautiful bottle of an artisanal rum, double aged from Plantation Barbados rum. Super tasty. It's been great to listen to some jazz records with as well. Typically I enjoy a bourbon, but that is nice and sweet. So welcome to Vinyl Happy Hour. Like I said, double episode happening today because there's so many great releases to talk about. My name is Skylar from cultureshockshop.com. I'm the owner of Culture Shock Clothing and Records here in Rockford, Illinois, and I've been an avid fan of vinyl for many, many years. I have been working on building up my rock collection and adding a lot of new and used vinyl to our record store, plus my personal collection. But one thing that has always been suffering is my jazz collection. Uh, because I have sold so many off over the years and because I was busy completing my more modern artists and my rock stuff. So I am so pleased. I'm actually beyond pleased with how great the quality, the packaging, and the sound of some of these special releases are. And you know it's hard for me to talk about uh, a lot of this jazz without mentioning some sort of Blue Note stuff or of course even Miles Davis. Um, we're definitely giving Blue Note a run for their money with some of these releases that are coming out on the Impulse label, these acoustic sound series. But don't worry. There's a couple of the newest Tone Poet series that I'm gonna talk about also from Blue Note. Uh, but let's jump right into it. And these records here are available at least temporarily or right now at cultureshockshop.com. So if you go check the blues and jazz releases out in the description below, all of the records we're talking about tonight, plus anything else that's still available is available on our website and we can ship it to you or you can choose in-store pickup at checkout. But Blue Note has been, you know, a big thing we've been featuring. They've been doing their like 80th anniversary series. They started that a while ago, now the Tone Poet. We also talked recently on some previous episodes about the Prestige 70, 70th anniversary of Prestige Records, also another great label. A lot of these, oddly enough, were recorded by Rudy Van Gelder in New Jersey. Uh, a lot of different labels actually recorded with the same producer and engineer there. Um, not every single one of them, but a lot of them do come from a different era. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this one. This is um, Gil Evans, Out of the Cool. And this is the Gil Evans Orchestra, actually. Uh, a lot of people are gonna recognize his name. This is the release I'm talking about here. I'm gonna talk about what I love about it, but I did have to bust out my uh, <coughs> original Six Eye Columbia of Sketches of Spain because you'll recognize the name who conducted this album. You've got arranging conducted by Gil Evans. Also, he had worked on several other albums. Uh, the Corgi and Bass one also with Miles Davis, orchestra under the direction of Gil Evans. Um, so the dude's got major cred, obviously he had worked on some huge Miles Davis albums. But this one's really special and I want to talk about every little detail that I love about this. Not just the sound quality, not just the releases that are getting chosen, uh, but just what a great job they did. And it starts from the very beginning. The way that these come packaged, which are also similar to the Blue Note Tone Poet series. So I won't talk as much about that one as I will about this right now. They're in these loose bags that have a rip off top. If you've ever bought a record, you know how, what a pain in the ass it is sometimes to get the shrink wrap off. I've got a secret trick I should show you um, that never damages the album, but sometimes just getting it open or whatever, you end up bending the jackets. Luckily, they're super stiff ones, but I love the tear away and I love that I have so many records that sometimes I don't open records right away or they maybe sit on the shelf in storage for a little bit. So these are really loose bags. So they're not tugging and pulling on the record. Um, you know, I know this is a lot of just talking about the cover of the packaging instead of the music, uh, but it is important, I think, to have art that you like, jackets that you like, detail, especially when you're paying a price for something, which these could, these could be a hundred bucks and I think it'd be worth it. They're just pressed so well, made so well. Luckily, they're all like, like 35 bucks. But this is a high quality, oh, the other thing, it's all from analog music too. So the story in the music is that this comes from the original analog tapes all the way back from 1961. No digital things. But the attention to detail, as a record store owner, I especially love this, that the little 60 Impulse, the 60th anniversary of Impulse, the, the, the house that Train built, John Coltrane had a lot to do with this record label, of course. They put the sticker where it's not blocking somebody's face. It's not blocking the name of the album or anything like that. So what a cool little attention to detail. You'll notice like even on the next one, it's not in the same spot on some of their other releases. So that's intentional, I'm sure. And then you've got the cool little acoustic sound stickers down here that let you know these are mastered from the original analog tapes 
by top mastering engineers and manufactured on 180 gram quality record pressings and even the pressing company that made the jackets and stuff. So easy to open, you rip that off, get it open and you don't have to worry about it being tight, stretching over, pulling your corners and easy to open without trying to shred it open or cut into it. I've seen people cut into things and leave cut marks on their jacket, oh my God. Woo, the collector of me just starts crying a little bit. But look at how glossy, look at how beautiful these are. These are a lot, again, very similar to some of these other high quality reissues. Um, some of these reissues were in like limited number series from some different artists on, and people are paying several hundred dollars for this, some of them. So one, the only thing that was just a tiny letdown to me is if you've been keeping up with the acoustic sound series, am I saying that right? Oh my God, acoustic, yeah, acoustic sound series. Um, they still have the 20, this is a 2020 release, 2021 release, but they still have the 2020 releases inside. I was wondering if they'd print a new inner or something like that. No big deal but it's really cool to see the other 2020 releases that had come out on this acoustic sound series. Uh, they also put it in like one of these, like, um, what do you call it? Like static free in inner sleeves, you know, things like that. Nice thick vinyl, fits really well. Just a great job on the packaging. You've got your little layout showing everyone. Ooh, who's, I think it's uh, the trumpet on a couple of these songs is, uh, uh, dang it. Oh yeah, John Coles. John Coles, he also had a really great Blue Note album back in the day. Um, but just everybody playing on here. You also see uh, Alvin Jones on percussion, who had done you know a lot of work on Impulse and with John Coltrane and many, many, many Blue Note albums, actually. Um, so cool to see all these artists playing together. But I think what's cool about some of these releases is it's not just straight up jazz or anything like that. You're getting some orchestra music, you're getting some nightclub music, you're getting even a little bit of blues and definitely you know more of that big band sound also. Not everybody wants just straight up jazz, and I get it. It's not as approachable for everyone, you know, if it's just horns or something like that. Um, so cool to see them going and digging out some of this other stuff. Impulse, of course, does ride all over the place from your more hard bop stuff to your free jazz and some far out stuff and experimental stuff. Uh, but I thought that was a great release, just a great packaging. And this is probably one that a lot of people don't have in their collection yet. And originals are getting scarce to find. So that's a great job. Here's another one. A lot of people, you know, you think you know Ray Charles, but you may not know him if you don't know this album. This is a great album title too. I love how it's called Genius Plus Soul Equals Jazz. That's just a great album title. And this is arranged by Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones, he is the top dog of some jazz and some arranging and stuff like that. He did a lot of soundtracks, a lot of jazz albums, and then his own albums just sound great too. So you know it's impeccable sounding recording already. Uh, working with some great people on this. Uh, Sonny, Terry Clark, I wanna say Sonny Clark, but Terry Clark on horn too. You got all the players listed. Great picture of Ray Charles there. Uh, this is Ray Charles actually playing organ and stuff. This is kind of fitting up there more with your, you know, more of your big band stuff also. It's a great jazz album, great sounding release. Of course, Quincy Jones many years later, would go on and do the Michael Jackson albums and stuff like that. And you know, those are some of the biggest selling, best sounding albums ever. So his connotation being connected to this recording and with Ray Charles adding his kind of R&B flavor and kind of putting a story to some of the music. It's just really cool to hear. Uh, just again, great, great job on the packaging, glossiness, thickness. Again, like I said, I love how they place the stickers on there. That's just like, if I sticker things at the store, I never want to put it on someone's face or over that. Just great little attention to detail. Blue Note did the same thing. So these are still available at our website too. Um, what's cool about this is I'm gonna kind of mention that there's two sides to the tone poets because they are giving us some of the, the true, you know, the true max of the hard bop and jazz era and stuff like that. Dexter Gordon, what a cool dude. Uh, this is him working with Kenny Drew, Art Taylor on drums. Another one of my favorite horn players on trumpet, you've got uh, Donald Byrd. This is One Flight Up from Dexter Gordon. So this was also available on like, I think their 75th anniversary a few years ago on just a really kind of flimsy jacket, you know, nice affordable price. Uh, but this is their full analog cut. These Tone Poet series, these guys are Tone Poets because there's no, no words. This is all, you know, 60s, 50s jazz stuff. You know, this is like also 61, 62 era. So these guys are poets with their tones. They're telling a story. They're telling about the the anguish they've had to suffer, the problems they've had to endure through their through their blue through their bluesy jazz and through their jazz. You know, it's a real good hard bop jazz. They're speaking about their lives and stuff like that. And sometimes, you know, it does come up 
in the album titles and things like that. I'll talk about that on the next release especially. Um, but really cool to see that if you want to get a few bucks cheaper version of this, that's available. But they did kind of one of their bigger guys. Dexter Gordon, he should be as well known as all the Art Blakey's and John Coltrane's and stuff like that. And, uh, he's, yeah, one of the also one of the coolest and one of the best tenor tax players of all time. Influential as anyone else to other musicians as well. I just love this picture. I mean, he just looks debonair, dude. He looks so cool. He is such a huge guy, so you can tell that the length of his, you know, breast pockets and suit coat and arms and legs. He's just so tall. Uh, just looking so cool there. Uh, so they captured some really cool photos of the guys in studio sessions too, which you don't get these photos on the regular version. So really nice job on these Tone Poet series. Of course, all analog cut, super nice, all by Kevin Gray. Really nice analog feel. So the two sides of the Tone Poets, like I said, they are bringing out some of the well-known and classic pieces, stuff like that. But here's a sleeper. Here's one that not a lot of people are... All right, jumping back into part two of video two. Enjoying a little rum. That's what happens when your memory gets full. You just jump back into the video. All right, guys. So I was talking about there's like the two sides of the Tone Poet series from Blue Note. What's really interesting is they are bringing out some of those Stone Cold classics, the ones that everybody wants or everybody knows about. But I love... Oh, I guess I could say this is a brand new release, actually, because... What's really interesting about this um, Andrew Hill release, Passing Ships, this is the first time this has ever been on vinyl. Well, even though this was recorded in 1969, did you mention that part already? I don't remember. So anyway, this was a 1969 release on Blue Note. Uh, when Blue Note had been sold to Liberty Records, but the original owners were still working with Blue Note. Uh, wow, so this got shelved. This is a great album. This is a sleeper. I mean, a lot of people probably don't know this album, and Andrew Hill doesn't, you know, get recognized like the Donald Birds and the Art Blakeys and all those types of people, you know. So, this is a cool album though because he's working with a lot of people, though. Even though it's still kind of the he came out of that hard bop era, kind of later than a lot of the other guys. There's a lot of people playing on this. You've got Woody Shaw, Dizzy Reese on trumpet, Julian Priest on trombone, Bob Northern French horn. It just goes on and on. There's bass, there's clarinet, Joe Farrell, soprano sax, and tenor sax, and flute clarinet. He did a lot of stuff with. Um, like CTI and stuff like that did a lot more funk and some of that different stuff. So some of these guys, oh, Lenny White, drummer, who did Lenny White and 27 was the name of the group, Lenny White and 27, and that was straight up funk and R&B. But Andrew Hill kind of usually gets talked about being kind of free or kind of avant-garde jazz and stuff like that, uh, but he really wasn't. This is still kind of a hard bop piece, although it does start out with Sideways, the first track. It is a little more fleeting, a little kind of a kind of out there, you know, a little harder to follow, and which I like, I think it's really interesting. Uh, but then it brings you back down with Passing Ships, the title track. Oh, I should mention Andrew Hill, pianist, actually wrote these songs too. So these are all his composings. Great music though, wow. And then Passing Ships definitely calms me down. Gives you that little kind of steady beat, that little nightclub beat, but uh, really gives me a visual of kind of like seeing, you know, entering through the fields or a soundscape or a landscape, something you hear maybe on a movie or a soundtrack. Uh, such a cool album, and it's different than the other Blue Notes that it's a little longer, so it actually is a double LP, so I noticed there's a few bucks more when I first ordered them in for the store, uh, and I didn't realize, since it's never been on vinyl, that it was going to be a double LP, kind of, because the fourth side is just blank, so you got your nice little groove surface there if you want to test your anti-skate or set up your record player on it, maybe. Uh, so a couple of the tracks are very long, which also happens when you have so many players, and you're getting the parts where people get to drop their solos and work together on some different parts of the songs like that. Uh, what's also really interesting is uh, this is still, yeah, this is still a uh, mastered engineered by Rudy Van Gelder, who did almost all of that classic Blue Note era, plus a lot of other labels you heard. Um, but anyway, what was I was gonna say, oh yeah, the recording, it's definitely different than some of the, you know, that pocket of Blue Note most people know, or most jazz in general is gonna be, you know, 52, 54 to, you know, 65, where a lot of people drop out of listening to jazz, but there's still so many great jazz albums coming after that. Uh, but I noticed that uh, his piano, sometimes when he's doing more of a solo, brings a really bright front and center and then blends back in with the other music. And, uh, you know, you forget almost that there is a piano sometimes with some of the music, which is different than a lot of other, you know, let's say Horace Silver or other classic piano uh, jazz albums. What else was I going to say? It's also really interesting that this had gotten shelved, I forgot to mention, so long. Most people didn't know about it. It actually didn't even get released, and it might not even got released in the U.S., but maybe in Japan or somewhere on CD in 2003. It did actually get in the US also, 
uh, because I was reading that Andrew Hill actually passed away in 2007. So it's really cool that this did get released still in his lifetime. He was a little younger than a lot of these other classic jazz artists. Um, so that did come out in his lifetime. And he had quite a few albums after this, although he did leave music and go into the education business or was a jazz professor or something like that. Uh, but he continued making a few albums throughout his whole life. Uh, but yeah, such a cool album. Just so cool. I love that these Blue Note Tongue Poet series and some of these great reissue series are doing this. I'm going to call this a new release since this has never, ever been on vinyl. Um, so this is something where even if you're the most astute jazz person and, you know, are wanting to listen to this analog vinyl and stuff like that, here's a release that you don't have because it got shelved. And there's selling out probably. So we do have a few copies. These are available in store and at our website at cultureshockshop.com. Oh my gosh, let's talk about another, let's just call it a new release, even though it's from someone who's no longer with us, but it had never been on vinyl. And because I had so much vinyl to talk about for our Vinyl Happy Hour series, I did a second episode featuring more, more jazz. And I'm just gonna say, this is a jazz release because this Amy Winehouse live set, it's really jazzy. You got a great, great vocals, great singer, one of the best singers of, of our generation for sure but playing with some great jazz artists, great big bands and stuff too. This is a triple LP. So this is live at the BBC, obviously a very, you know, huge institution. And some of these different series and different shows are from different years of her life. So some of them are a little more inti intimate, stripped down. Some of them have a huge band. And then some of them have, you know, more, more guitar and other things like that. But it's great to hear the live instruments, nice thick vinyl, triple LP. Uh, honestly, you just hear some of this music in a different way than you would on her albums. Great release, great packaging. Great to hear this music, honestly. Uh, Lauren was joking with me because when I first got with Lauren, you know, what, almost 15 years ago, she was a pretty big Amy Winehouse fan, and I didn't mind her at all. You know, I wasn't that into her, didn't know a lot about her, uh, honestly, but uh, I love that the Daptones, you know, played on her Back to Black album and stuff like that. She always had great musicians backing her and playing with her. Uh, so to hear the music done and hear her in that live setting where you've got that electric that energy uh just around it uh, just hearing her voice uh, hearing some of the covers it's just a great release and it's never been on vinyl i think some of this probably has come out in her box sets and b-sides and extras and rarities over the years i've probably heard a couple of them but never all together like this uh 2004 2003 and 2007 live at port Chester hall um, so each LP kind of features like a little different live section. And uh, wow, it's just a great album. It does come with a download card and all that stuff. Uh, so if you want to have it digitally, it's just really great to hear her. And obviously hearing some of her soul and jazz influence and hearing some of the pain she had to. Uh, it's definitely a really intimate setting on some of these. Um, definitely a really great sounding release though. Great way to kind of honor some of the music that she had for the short amount of time she was around. And honestly, it's just, it's a lot different sounding than the albums. I mean, some of this energy, some of these people, that's what's cool about a lot of those jazz albums. Those are all one takes. Those are all intakes, studio takes. A lot of that is in a live. Some of their releases are actually live recordings too, which we all know, and we've all been missing. Live music is definitely the best thing to do. Uh, and we're missing that through the pandemic and hopefully coming back soon. And I know we all know that the best way to shop for your records is at your independent record stores too. So support your local stores, help keep us all alive, keep things lively and brilliant with uh, your music collection. And please keep checking out our videos. We love to see the support we get, the comments we get. Uh, definitely communicating with you guys has been a lot of fun and seeing uh, some of the records that we get to mail out to you guys and some of the questions we get to answer and all the support we've had in the store as well. It's much appreciated. So thanks for sharing this other video with me. Please check out our other Vinyl Happy Hour videos and you can check out these records also. I've got a couple of links. These, these are all going to be in the jazz link below in the video. Uh, but check our staff picks also on our website at cultureshockshop.com. We like to change those up every week with some of our favorite new releases. There's so much stuff. We're not even mentioning those videos. Obviously, there's lots of new stuff coming in. I just like to kind of handpick a few to show off and talk about. So until next week for our Vinyl Happy Hour, cheers.